how you need organize the perfect Joomla day, but I would like to get uh, the, the sharing of ideas we all have with our own Joomla days or user groups uh, so we can learn from each other. Uh, we don't need to make the same mistake all over again all the time at several events. Um, so I will pass on the microphone for a second to get to know each other. What, what are you doing? Uh, are you involved with the user group or Joomla day? What country? Uh, a bit of the background of it. So we know uh, what each of us is doing at a local level or not doing, but interested in to start up that might be also possible. So I pass over. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Matthew. Um, been organizing the Jumina Day in South Africa. Um, we've done nine in total. Well, the ninth one's coming up, so eight in total. And uh, currently the organizer with Jacques for the Jumina user group in Cape Town, which is held, we try once a month. Sometimes we don't always achieve it. Um, yeah, I guess that's a bit. That's it for now. Nice. Hi, my name is Hans uh, from the Netherlands, organizing uh, a local uh, Joomla user group in uh, Satorgenbos, and uh, one of the organizers of the Dutch Joomla days. Well, that's it. Hi, I'm Hagen. I'm a frequent visitor of Joomla days, and <laughs> sometimes I help out. Oh, and, and I'm part of the events group. In there's an events group somewhere, I don't know the name, because there's not much interaction there, and I would love to have much more interaction there and, yeah, to talk about and to, to have more Joomla days. Hi, uh, my name is Moose, I'm from Ethiopia, and uh, we're very interested in organizing a Joomla day and uh, setting up a user group there and, you know, spreading the Joomla love. My name is Mike Carson. I'm a member of the uh, Joomla events team and uh, co-founder of our Joomla Chicago user group, which is one of the largest groups in uh, the United States, and also a Joomla Day Chicago organizer. Uh, hi, my name is Radek Suski. We are currently trying to organize a Joomla Day in Poland. Uh, we are organizing. Uh, basically, I'm really disappointed because I, heard, I thought we will have here some perfect how-to you are going to provide. Um, well, wow. yeah, <laughs> <yeah, yeah. laughs> joke. Hi, my name is uh, Robert. Uh, I will organize. Uh, I think about to organize a Joomla group uh, near by Stuttgart in Germany. Hi, I'm Sean van Dudem. Uh, I just uh, study Joomla and learning it. And, uh, I'm learning it at, at my dad's, who um, is um, a boss and employee of his own company, uh, Website Concepts, and that's just it. <laughs> I'm from the Netherlands, by the way. Hi, I'm Jesse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> And I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, anything else? Yeah, well, I've, I've never done anything for Joomla user groups. Uh, well, perhaps you've given a presentation now and then. And I'm just uh, uh, keen also to discuss, yeah, th we were discussing this morning, like how could we share tips and tricks on Joomla user groups worldwide uh, to improve them in over, um, well, overall. I, I used to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm Tina. I'm with Side Crowned, and um, basically I have never organized any event. But you, we are obviously a, one of the sponsors to a few of the events, and um, we're looking to sponsoring more events. So I'm here basically to meet you guys and to know who should I be talking to if we want to go and sponsor another event. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, my name is Francisco, uh, I'm from Argentina, and we are hoping to create, to have our, our first Joomla day over there, so I want to learn from you, from, from your experiences, and all that. Hi, I'm Jacques. Um, I also help organize the Joomla day Cape Town along with Matthew, and I also help in the uh, committee that organizes the Joomla days in the recent Joomla days, at least. Oh, my name is Robert. I'm I'm uh, 
officially the Juma Awans team leader. Um, I organized Juma Day in Germany. I'm one of the JAP organizer. So, yeah. Hello, my name is uh, Thierry, and I come from Brussels in Belgium. And we're going to try to start the first, for the French part of the country, the first Joomla group uh, next month. And I'm here to have some information how to do it and uh, how to organize it. Hello, my name is Brian, and I'm, I'm addicted to Joomla days. Um, I've, uh, obviously, I'm one of the organizers uh, here for Jane Beyond, and last year I went to 13 Joomla days, and <laughs> three so far this year, and I'm in Sweden next week, so um, not from an organizational point of view, but maybe I have something to share about the, the different approaches and different styles of the different Joomla days. Hello, I'm Martijn. I'm from uh, Holland, the Netherlands, and I also am part of the team of the Dutch Joomla Days, and I take care of the sponsoring part. Okay, so uh, thank you all. Uh, I think we have a great mix of uh, people already experienced in organizing Joomla Day and several new ones, so welcome. Um, there are a lot of topics during Joomla Days we can discuss, um, and I've written out several we can discuss. Uh, but it's also uh, yeah, up to the group now what we're going to discuss. Um, I think it might be a good idea to start with the Joomla days. Uh, most are interesting in real Joomla days, Mo a lot of related to Joomla user groups as well. Um, so from a starting point, when you want to start a, Joomla, a user day, Joomla day, uh, you can get some support uh, at Joomla. Open Source Matters, maybe Robert you can tell a short about what open source matters can do for you, or just, I say, $500 and... <laughs> <laughs> now, and the basic, uh, when you start the Joomla Day, you can get some uh, financial support of open source matters. Um, and that's a part, but I think it will be great if we can uh, have some more support also just from uh, each other knowledge. Uh, at the moment, quite a lot of Joomla Days are trying to do their own event and trying out things and making possibly same mistakes other events already did, so it will be great that there are already some places you can share that, but it's not at the moment really active. Uh, so hopefully this is a starting point to continue on that online on several channels to uh, keep sharing that knowledge. Um, yeah? Okay, um, so the financial part is, is um, for if you are a, um, uh, if you have already Joomla days in the, in the country, then you get this $500 uh, support where you can essentially do everything what you like with this $500. Um, when you are uh, doing the first Joomla day in, in, uh, in the country, then you get double, so you can get $1,000. So it's, it's more complicated to use the first time. You have no contacts to sponsor them, and, and so uh, uh, that's the reason why we double uh, the amount of uh, money. Um, so that is, is the financial part. What are the conditions to, to get that? Like, um, yeah. You, have um, you, you need to, you, um, it must be approved Joomla Day. Okay. So, and to get uh, Joomla Day approved, you need uh, two things. You need uh, a location and you need a date. So that's the two things you need. Um, we look a little bit if it makes sense. So um, making 10 Joomla days uh, every week in, 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 uh, um, in Belgium makes not so much sense. <laughs> so, but, but making uh, 10 Joomla days in, in the States makes sense because it's really big. Um, so we look a little bit in, in, this, in this direction. So and um, yeah, that's all. So that's two, two conditions. So it's nice when you have a Joomla user group helping out. It's, uh, but it's not really. So that's not the rules. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. The process is um, we have a new website, uh, events.joomla.org. Um, you give your um, uh, information about the Joomla day in this website. So then we look over um, over the data and approve it. So and then you are on the site and that's all. So it's 
quite simple, so not, not really a big, um, big process. But that's only for, for, the, for the Joomla day and for improving, the Joom, uh, for improving the Joomla day. So there are a couple of other things. So you probably um, need a website for your Joomla day. So then uh, you need a domain. Doma uh, domain. Um, so you have to um, also have approval for using the domain when the, the, the domain has Joomla in it. And it makes some sense to have a domain like Joomla Day PL for Poland or Joomla Day BE for, for, uh, in, in, in Belgium. So um, please don't do uh, years on, on, on the domain where you have to go to this approval process again and again when you uh, have the next year. So it, uh, it should be one time and that's it. I forget or something. We have uh, we have a really good. Uh, I think we have a good documentation about how to organize a Joomla day. Where there's all steps in what you look at and, and to make uh, it simple to have a Joomla day. So it's in on the on the website. side. Yeah, it's also on the wiki. It's listed there as well. Uh, so one of the things that uh, I think is really important that you don't organize Joomla day yourself. Uh, it's really important to have a team around you. Um, maybe or yes, <laughs> it's. <okay. laughs> Um, I was just wondering, like, w we have already user groups in the Netherlands, and there are also Joomla days pretty well organized, I think. Um, so, b b do we already know of this group, how many um, people are here within, uh, well, within this group that do want to organize Joomla days, but haven't done also? Uh, like, for, for instance, Poland, I think there has been already a, a Joomla day. No, okay. So th th that's one one opportunity of people actually needing the information of others. Yeah. Ethiopia, uh, yeah. So uh, Wallonia or yeah. <laughs> okay, and already a Joomla day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're experienced. Uh, um, yeah. Th so that was it basically. I think. So w w I mean. So obviously I've attended a lot of different Joomla days and the one thing I wanted to share was that every Joomla day is different. Yeah, there is something, you know, there's some sort of rules, that, you know, not rules, good practice about how to organize it, how to market it and stuff and that's the same as marketing and organizing anything. But in terms of how you structure the Joomla day and what you're trying to do during it is very different and you have to know or have an idea about your local community or your local market um, as to the type of event it is. Um, so as a, as a, as a for example, um, the Joomla Day in the Netherlands, um, it's been going a long time and the level of the users, the attendees at the event is very high. So you can do some quite high level type stuff. Um, at other Joomla Days, maybe it's the first one in the country, um, the level might be quite low. So there's no point doing uh, getting people to give really in-depth high-level topics, you need to do a lot more introductory level topics. Um, or it could be um, at Joomla Day India, for example, the people who are attending there were not looking for things about how to build websites, because that's not what they're doing. What most of them are doing is supporting people building websites or building modules or building components. They were more at the development level. So there's no point doing a whole session about designing templates there's, you know, if that's the wrong marketplace or doing things that are too high level. Um, and the second thing to say about that, so that's about the topics that you choose. And the second thing is about the speakers that you have. And obviously I get invited to a lot of places and speak, and I only speak English. And if I go to the Netherlands, that's absolutely no problem at all. Everybody speaks English, I'm going to Sweden next week, everybody speaks English, not a problem. Yeah, if I go, if I go to, um, I went to Joomla Day Spain, they have to have a translator for me, because the level of um, pe the level of English knowledge is not great. It's not good enough. So, does it make sense to invite me to speak at a Joomla Day in Spain? Well, it might do if you think that maybe using myself or, or some other people that are well known 
names if it adds marketing value to your events. So it may make sense then, but as a gen but just to invite anybody to come and speak in a, the wrong language doesn't make sense. Yeah? If you need to do a session on templates, I'm sure there's somebody in your local community who speaks the local language that can do templates. So you don't have to bring it in, and that's a mistake that I see quite a few drum days doing, is thinking that we need to bring people in, which obviously is expensive as well. Um, you don't, you know, maybe you have to bring in some mar for marketing value some people, but in, as a general rule, you can just stick to, stick to local. So, uh, uh, several questions out of uh, Brian's story is uh, basically um, with some uh, openings to discussions. Uh, how do you get an, a good overview of what people are looking for in your country? How do you get connected? How do you know what is, wh what is your target audience? How do you market it for that? Uh, another question is how do you handle inviting uh, speakers to your event? Uh, what about covering the cost? So, but uh, first, uh, does anybody good information to share about how do you get to know what the community is looking for uh, at your event. So you don't have a developer event for real basic uh, Joomla users or the other way around. Anybody to share about it? Okay, so in Cape Town we've had the Joomla user groups which we run once a month and we found that um, asking what topics should be presented um, at the Joomla day, we get feedback through that. In the past we've run surveys from the past uh, users that have attended the Joomla days the previous Joomla day we had a survey run but we never got the results so don't rely on people who are going to say they're going to do something and it never happens so but the surveys did help um, it actually guides you in the right direction one of the big things which helped us was the international speakers which we invited through um, it really drew a crowd coming into the to the event and we topped out at a hundred this last last year so um, the international speakers do add a hell of a lot of benefit for us but we've got an English an English market we have a similar approach. We did a survey. A survey. Uh, we sent uh, emails to our user for, uh, for user, uh, forum user. So uh, about uh, we got about 2,000 responses. Uh, 1,500 people uh, declared they want to attend. I don't know how ma how many of them are, are really going to attend. But uh, we we ask some uh, something about how is your English le level and uh, what are you interested in and so on and. Uh, well, that, that was the same idea, basically. Yeah. One of my personal suggestions will be really try to connect with the local user groups, if they are there, with the local community, and get them involvement uh, out of that. And maybe it's also an idea, don't start directly at Joomla Day, but start with the user group, uh, just to get some people around. Uh, also, that uh, those people might be able to help you later on uh, with organizing the Joomla Day. Uh, it's really important to have a team around you, not doing one person. That's way too lot of a uh, heck of work. Uh, in the Netherlands, meanwhile, we have, I think, 11? 11. 11 people on the team. Um, and we are all busy with our own stuff, but just to kind of uh, give you an impression uh, that doing it yourself is probably not the best idea. Robert, say, I want to do it my way in Germany. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, in Germany we have also teams, but 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 um, um, I, I think when you when you do your first Joomla day and you build a team, start small. So we um, you do a lot of things in in, in the Netherlands, and so you are not really uh, a good example for us. someone started with a Joomla day. Um, so and and maybe another point is we, uh, we doing Jane Beyond here with uh, essentially with two and two people, so um, you can do such an event with, with less people. Um, when you have a small team coordinating, it's, it's easier. Um, uh, you can, uh, you, f you find meeting slots easier and all this stuff. So, um, uh, so my, my recommendation is when you start with a Joomla day, first ask your local community, try to involve user groups when you, uh, and build a small team and start small, maybe only with one day. Don't look at at the at the Dutch. Really don't look at Jane Beyond. We're doing three days or with 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 uh, I don't know 80 hours of sessions and and, and 50 speakers. So uh, start start small. Do one day. Maybe start on 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 um, on, on the morning. So do only on, or, or do it in, in in the evening for 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 event. So. No. Okay. 
it's a question I'm 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 wondering about, and uh, some might have ideas about it. What makes a difference between different countries where one country will get a hundred people coming, other country will get a thousand four hundred responses? Okay, not perhaps uh, uh, getting there, but I'm sure you're going to end up having quite a big event and looking at places like. Thailand, uh, Italy, I think, is one of the big ones. Uh, well, it, most of Europe, um, or the southern part of Europe. Um, what makes well, South America, or Brazil, uh, why are certain countries, are there such a huge interest in Joomla days and other countries not? Is it is it the size of the user groups when those events are being organized? Uh, is it the size of the forums, or why this big discrepancy in, in amount of people attending? Um, I think the biggest factor is the language. If you look at the places that have, got, have had the largest attendee attendances at, at Joomla events, it's Italy um, and Thailand. They're the two largest by a long way. And then followed by Brazil and Chile. And so all of those are countries that are non-English speaking countries. So the available resources to them to learn Joomla are a lot less than those people who speak English. You've not got the global spread. And then you've got more likely to have a Polish language forum already created or a Thai language forum already created. Whereas like Joomla Day in the UK, you know, Big place. A lot of Joomla users. We've had three Joomla days. We had 40 people, 50 people, and then this year 150 people. Why so few? There's no local community because we speak English, so we speak English and it, we join, all our information is from the same place. We don't need to go to an event to gather the information. So that's my, my perception is that the places that are bigger are the ones who are more insular because of their language, or there's a barrier created because of their language. I think one of the another important aspects of um, it, it's not always about numbers. It's also really about uh, what is your um, uh, target audience. What, what, where do you market for? Do you want an event with a lot of people coming uh, when free admission to get to know what is Joomla all about, or do you market for the people that are already working with Joomla in their uh, hobby or pro professional businesses? Uh, and learn more about Joomla uh, with the kind of admission fee. So that's, I think, also a really important aspect of yeah, uh, how big is your event. I really worry, and that's also very important to get your marketing right. Uh, what people are you looking for for your event? If you don't have it that right for yourself, how do people we potentially will visit your event know what they are? If is the event for them, yes or no? Um, I'd like to make a comment on that. Um, so when Cape Town's Jumila Day or South Africa's Jumila Day started, we, um, I think we had a grand total of 40 when we first started and we've now got 100 as our sort of max that we've reached. But we first targeted only Joomla users. So, and that contributed to having a small group in the beginning. So last Joomla Day we decided that we'll try and target agencies that work in the web industry Joomla users that are already existing, and businesses and government. So we had representatives from business, government, agencies, and Joomla users, whether they're developers or not developers. And I think um, that's worked quite well for us to increase the numbers, because Joomla is still, there's a lot of people in South Africa that use it, but they all stick their heads under the table and they don't come out. So um, it's very difficult to draw those people out to come to a Joomla day. And uh, we've made a decision that we charge for the event. We don't do free events um, because there's costs associated with it. Um, so we find that all the tech events that happen in South Africa, they're quite expensive to attend. Uh, there are free ones, but they're sponsored by big companies. So we've gone with the attitude that you must pay for the event because you're going to get quality information out of that. And at the end of the day, you're going to learn something which you're not going to get on a forum. You're not going to get from reading a book. It's hands-on experience with people. Yeah, and part of that is also that you can, when you ask a fee anyway, you know about the people who are coming. It's not that really people on a Friday night had a few beers too much and then they decided, okay, I will not go to the Joomla Day at the end. So it's important for your organization structure so you, can, you know how many people you can expect 
for everything, for the venue, for the food, for the drinks. That's really important to know. So I suggest to ask a fee anyway, or you have enough space and it doesn't matter how many people are coming. Uh, I think like Greece was a walk in, walk out, walk out day of Juma Day. Yeah. India really struggled. They decided it, um, that they had to have it as a free event because of local economy and culture and everything. And how many people came on each day, AJ? About 200? About 200. But they had over 500 people sign up. So that um, they had no way of knowing um, how many people are going to come, how much food has got to be ordered, how many chairs have they got to be in the room, is the venue big enough? I think there was a point where they said, no more sign-ups, we're full. And of course, at the actual event, there were plenty of people. So learning from that one, when, it, when Jumna Day Israel started, they also had a, fr a venue that was free of charge to them. But they charged, I think it was a, a small fee, yeah, which was enough for you to think, oh yeah, I paid for that, I'd better go, but not enough for you to think, oh, I'm not sure if I can afford it. So that's something to think about. So even if you've got great sponsorships or free venues, as Santa said, from an organizational point of view, you need those, a, a, a good commitment on the numbers. So just on the fee structure, I find the, um, this perception about it's too little or too, more, too much, um, rather set a, a don't set something that's too low because then the perception is that you're getting a cheap conference. So we've, we're actually increasing our price for this coming year. Um, obviously costs have gone up, but we're trying to keep it so that it's still relatively affordable for the one-man show. But um, you know they're going to learn a lot out of it at the end of the day, and people are making business out of Joomla, so we'll pay for the event. What if it becomes profitable? <laughs> <laughs> it's a zero profit. We have an account where the excess money sits till the next Joomla day, and that gets pumped into the next marketing. We have deposits to put down on a venue. Um, our deposit's 100% of the venue cost. So I've got to deal with the current venue to put down X amount of money, which is actually about 100 euros. Before the day of the event, we have to have 100% paid. But, but part of your question is, of course, um, you organize a Joomla day, you ask for some money, and then at the end you have some positive result or negative. Uh, it's always good to have a kind of structure around the Joomla day, so it's not really up to a certain person at the end. So any people who already have a kind of structure around it, how to organize? So as we started 2000, uh, 2005 in Germany with, with, uh, with something was called Mambo Day, um, we, we set up a, um, a, a, a non-profit organization um, to uh, have something legal uh, to make the organization and, and sign a contract and so. So that, that's, that's a good idea. But, I, but I will, um, maybe some, some words also to the, to the um, making profit. Um, it's not bad making profit, profit. So, but um, so I, in, in my mind, um, Joomla days are community events, uh, people coming together, having fun, <coughs> and at the end of the day, I'm uh, I'm very happy when there is a uh, a black zero for for the event. So, um, th so that's my my, my what uh, I have in mind when. Uh, I've costs and, and fees and whatever. Just a question, so just to repeat the question. Yeah. Um, what about the necessity to have a legal entity to contain money? So the, the, what about the... Do you, do you need a company or do you need a... Do you need a, a company, a foundation uh, for uh, the Joomla Days? Yeah. So, so in the Netherlands we have a foundation around the Joomla Days and also the user groups. Uh, and a local community, that's all in one foundation. Uh, also, because of the money, so you can put it on a bank account, the legal stuff, and uh, you can also save it for next year. I mean, when next year we have less sponsorship, we have some kind of funds still there, so we can continue on that. And uh, at the end, we not really making profit, or that's not the, the aim, but it's good to keep, save some money to get our things done uh, at the end. I mean, to some extent, it does. It, it, that's going to depend on your local country. 
So, like, I mean, in the UK, you would not be setting up a non-profit yeah. to do it. Too difficult, too expensive. But you can actually create, cl um, like, like a, a, cl uh, a, f a group of friends bank accounts. Yeah, it's, it's pro you know, it's a proper thing. We could, you know, and so it has that same structure, but it's not a formal non-profit thing. Um, but it's, but it's probably best. Uh, I would suggest it's probably best that you're not relying on it being with one yeah. individual. Even if you don't set up something formal, um, you try and create something that's at least shared between a couple of people. Um, just to, uh, you know, avoids issues and and worries and things like that. So, so that's anyway very important to think about uh, when you start a new Joomla day. Uh, how are we going to handle the legal, uh, the financial stuff? It's not relying on one person. Uh, also, it is not. Yeah, I mean, when it goes really bad, you don't want to be personally responsible at the end. Uh, it might happen at the end. So, it's really important to uh, think about that uh, upfront before starting organizing it. I think it's important for getting sponsor too, for because as a legal form um, organization, you can give an invoice, and then so it's also important. Yeah, that also for your sponsors, it might be required you have something like that, and that's maybe a nice bridge to how you go with your sponsorships. I mean, uh, at the end, uh, you need sponsorships, um, what, unless you have the event sponsored, your food sponsored, everything sponsored. You might not need any sponsors, but most events need sponsors. Um, how do you get sponsors? Uh, how much do? You, sorry? Uh, yeah, how do you start? Uh, how do you get, get money? What kind of money do you need? Have, do you have any idea? How do you use your packages? How do you reach out to sponsors? So, you want to start? I, I will not, 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 not answer all questions, but, uh, but I will only, only say what you should, should not do. So, um, um, you are, can get easily from uh, publishers' books. You can get easily. Uh, subscriptions to whatever hosting no never do this this is not a good idea you need money real money it's, there's no value in giving books to attendees so yeah so and and uh, and you and it's also not fair to your to your real sponsors give to give uh, a publisher for for ten books what cost them maybe a hundred euros uh, gives them a free marketing slot. So um, for for and, and your other sponsors uh, paying thousands euro a thousand euro for 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 marketing the event and for for their marketing. So don't do this. So and and maybe and to say something about what what you should do. Um, make make uh, uh, make make a sponsorship program with a lot of options where people can sta can can go with um, not so many money in uh, or with more money and make make a, a range. So, but it depends on the on the local ec economy what you can ask for. We had a big challenge last year to get sponsors. Um, we don't have a, an NGO type foundation. Everything that we signed was done in our company. The sponsors generally don't have a problem with that either, as long as you're accountable for it. We had uh, signed deals with every single sponsor, stating what they're giving us and what we're giving them, right down to how often we're going to be tweet about their sponsorship. Um, that worked quite effectively for us. Um, we've just probably going to be able to secure Microsoft again for this year based on what we gave them and that's been quite a good um, uh, way to go but get them to sign on the dotted line I walked around with a folder it was this thick with all my agreements all the uh, um, transactions that we had ever done if anybody wanted to check that they could I had it all on hand there so I would suggest if you're not going to run a foundation or something like that and it's going to be through your company keep it with you Martin, maybe you. Yeah. Martin, is this? Um, to start with the the giveaways, um, our Juno days are run for um, eight years now, seven years. Um, so we are a known event. So I do the sponsoring for the Dutch event, and I got a lot of offers for a lot of money for giveaways. 
we give away three thousand dollars on giveaways. Can we get the sponsor, uh, the gold sponsorship, for example? And our policies, we just don't do that at all. And last year, I got so much, so many of those small giveaway packages that I said, okay, you can do that, but you have to pay us to do that. So I asked two hundred and fifty euros, and I got ten of them. Um, I got so much work out of it that this year I said I'm, I'm going to ask the same price, and I'm going to. Uh, ask 750 euros. I don't have any, I didn't get any, but now I got bigger sponsors, so it wasn't an issue. Uh, next year I'll do it again, but I'll make it a little bit smaller. I mean, this this works for me. Um, and again, and again, um, yeah, because there's a large, uh, we, we, we keep it small, the giveaways, for um, like in the end of the day, we only do seven you know, we, we from one sponsor we only give one giveaway, so we're not the whole afternoon g doing giveaways, but they get the they they do get the you know the exposure for it. Um, so this works really well for us. Um, and another thing, if you want to get sponsorship, is what I was thinking about: is first you need a potential uh, good event, actually. So. Do you get visitors? I mean, if you do it a couple of years, it's a lot easier because you can tell your sponsors, well, we're getting 100 people. So is that interesting for you? Um, do you have a good venue? This helps. Um, uh, but mainly, what kind of visitors do you get is, is really important. Um, and the next thing is making good packages um, where you can you know, offer something nice to them, of course. Um, and um, what I learned is I looked at a lot of other Joomla days, uh, how they did it. So I went to Joomla Day Germany, I went to JM Beyond, uh, our other team members went to Joomla Day UK, and also I looked at all the other websites you could find of Joomla Days, how they made their packages, and also for the price. What am I going to ask for this? So we were, before we had some sort of price, and I was wondering, is this an, a good price for our sponsorships? And then I looked at the German uh, prices, and they were twice, three times, four times as high. And I thought, hmm, maybe we're not doing something uh, right. Um, um, so, well, yeah, this year I actually got them. I, I doubled the prices, and they were all sold within two weeks, actually. But I think it's also because uh, I changed some, some other things in our packages. Um, um, I, have a good sp I have an English and Dutch sponsor folder online in our, um, on our website. And, um, with the prices in with the With the prices in there. And before I got a lot of questions, um, we didn't have the price on. And they I got a lot of questions, how much money is it going to cost me? And yeah, it just took me a lot of time. And now I have all the prices there. So I don't I only get the people who are really interested, which, which really helps. Um, yeah, what else can I say about this? Maybe it's I was just asking. Maybe from a sponsor side uh, perspective, you can add something on it? Oh, well, what really helps for me to make a decision if we are going to sponsor an event is that sponsor sheet uh, for first the packages, and but most important of all is that you have the information about the event, the profile of the people that you are targeting, because it's important for me to know what kind of people are going to be there, what is going to be my strategy for this event, and I'm making up my decision based on that information, because usually when well, we started sponsoring events, well, the first Joomla event was the Netherlands. And they did a great job because first I was online and I went to their website and I saw the packages and the information. It was just kind of a short recap of the event. How many people go there? What do they talk about? Um, what they are looking for? What's the level of their proficiency in Joomla? Are they just new users? Is it more advanced users or stuff like that? So basically, generally uh, describing what previous events have been or if it's just a starting event, like if you're organizing it for the first time, what kind of people are you looking to bring into the event? So that is really important. And then um, we are not looking to, we do not want to sponsor events into the form of giveaways. But I know that there are some people who want to do that. But this is good to, uh, and the other thing, if you want to allow your actually attract sponsors, they usually want to gain some kind of an exposure. So it's really important. It is really important to have good options for the sponsors in the sponsorship packages, like 
uh, being able to give away something. I don't want to give away like a hundred packages of free hosting because that's that's useless. That's, it means this means for me that we do not value our hosting, and we do. And um, yeah, well, that's basically it. Have a good description of the, of the event and have detailed sponsorship packages. Um, whether we will be able to have some sort of a booth, like a banner, so that we have we can actually have our name out there. Um, we are sometimes interested into speaking, but not always. We want we do not want to make marketing or sales presentations. We want to share experience and um, share knowledge that we have, which is related to what you guys do to the Joomla community. I mean, we do not necessarily want to sell our hosting on your events. I mean, it's more important for us to meet the people and gather feedback, because this is also a very usual, um, useful experience for us. So it's not necessarily that everybody wants to sell their service. So it's, it's just experience for us as well. So yeah, being able to have a booth or banner or to, to be, be, being able to do some giveaways, because people actually like that, but not for everyone. And what else? Mm, maybe these are like the most important things. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, so the question is if we are looking for long-term benefits before? Oh yeah, yeah, that would be that would be good. I know that you, um, the organizers, usually um, do a lot of uh, work to promote their event, like attract more visitors. Uh, so it would be good if we are included in any newsletters, uh, like to have our name there, so that people actually know that we are sponsoring the event before they go to the event. So they might probably, if they don't know us, they might see, oh yeah, these are these guys are sponsoring the event. Let me check them out. So this is good. Yeah, this helps. It would be good if you have it as an option in the sponsorship packages, like mentions in the newsletters, for example. Um, I, I just also wanted to point out that actually uh, when dealing with sponsorship, I've been a sponsor myself as well, and exposure is very important. But it's also very annoying to see unwanted sponsorship. And unwanted sponsorship is basically when uh, companies are, are still bringing along their flyers and putting them down on tables, or, uh, well, having a presentation which is too commercial. <laughs> That's also happening. Um, and of course, well, we're now in the in the t-shirt area, uh, or era, I mean, everybody's just promoting them, their own companies uh, with t-shirts, so that's that's something you can't stop. But as a sponsor, it's 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 very important to point out what your own opportunities are to, to sponsor or to promote yourself. But also the downside is like uh, you don't want uh, other sponsors to have much more exposure than y you do. So you have to make it clear as a, as an organization uh, how much exposure you get but also how much exposure the other people are getting, so you can make a good comparison between these two different things. Um, yeah, the first thing, if you start a Joomla day, you need, you need uh, good sponsors. And uh, first time I did this, I got a list of 130 possible leads, small companies, big companies, uh, to call or to email to ask them if they wanted to sponsor, uh, which was a horrible job, but also a very learning experience. I think out of those 130, I only got one or two, um, uh, which is not a really good uh, result, but it was very, you know, it was a learning experience for me. And now I know, okay, what kind of sponsorships can we get uh, uh, and in what way? And um, I think the most, uh, it's the most interesting for hosting parties and for extensions <laughs> builders. I'm surprised so far that the template builders aren't around a lot uh, yet, but uh, those two are, are uh, the best ones. And um, uh, with our, our, with those two companies, we also have, with a lot of them, we have a, a long-standing relationship. So this is also a bit, uh, how good are you in communi communicating with your sponsors? We have um, we have one hosting company which is sponsoring the event for at least four or five years now already. Seven probably. 
Uh, seven, yeah. They're, so they so they are with us from the start. Um, it's the same with uh, with one um, um, uh, extension builder, which is with us already from so many years. So it means we we are um, um, succeeding every year in putting down a good event and offering them what we promise. So we make packages. The first year I worked uh, there, we had packages which we could not actually deliver all of it. So I made the packages smaller, and then I knew the next year, oh, I can actually deliver more than only this. So I, I, I made the package bigger. And now, because I'm doing it already for a couple of years, I know more and more stuff. I know we can do other things as well, if we need it, to offer them. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, we are also getting low, this, uh, less things about sponsorship, and then I would like some short discussion about your program speakers. Uh, that's also a very important thing. So, uh, you want to respond to Martijn or? Some? Uh, just something to add. Like yeah? Okay. Don't try to make your sponsorship packages the perfect sponsorship package because you don't know. I mean, there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of, every sponsor will net probably want something else. And my advice would be, be open to suggestions, which doesn't mean that you have to satisfy all your sponsor's suggestions and uh, requests, but just be open. Ask them what else they would want to have. Uh, just because that's probably something useful that you might use for the next year's package or something like that. Just be open without committing to 100% that you will do that. So that's it. I, I'd like to add, if, if you're looking for sponsors, probably the absolute easiest way to find potential sponsors, look at who's sponsoring other events. That's, that's number one. I mean, because they're the most proactive. Look at, look at how many events they sponsor, you know, like Red Web and um, Microsoft, you know, people like that. They, they sponsor a lot of events, so they're probably going to be the most proactive to really approach. Um, in the easiest way. They're going to be your easiest, you know, uh, market targets, I guess you could say. Um, another thing to add is some sponsors, they may, they may also be good for, if they're Joomla focused, they could potentially be good speakers as well. So um, they could help you fill speaker slots, you know, and um, that's probably the easiest way that you could probably get a, a double bang for your buck, you know, in filling a sponsor slot and a speaker spot all in one shot. That brings it directly to the program, the schedule, and the speakers. Uh, how do you, uh, of course, it's great when sponsors are coming and doing a talk, but it's also a kind of, uh, you need to be careful that it's not turning into just commercial t talk session during, both, during your entire Joomla day. Um, so how do you get your schedule, your, your speakers, uh, and how do you prevent their own just self-promotion sessions and not really sharing knowledge sessions? Um, any suggestions for that? Or can I guess Hans, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, we call Brian, and I uh, think um, he just come to speak. Well, well, in, the, in the first years uh, of organizing the Dutch Joomla days, we uh, in, invited speakers to come over and ask them what they would like to speak during the, the Dutch Joomla days. Um, we quit doing that. Uh, nowadays we create our program, what we would like to hear, what we, we would like to let the audience hear, and then find speakers to, uh, to, to fill in the, the, the presentations to give. Well, and that's about it. And for, we're doing that now for the last two years. And the results are uh, great. Another interesting thing is also, um, are you um, invite them for free to your event because they're a speaker, or, or yeah, <laughs> we we in in the Netherlands we've in uh, in the past when you speak you get free entrance for the whole entire event, but two years ago with the same uh, Swift we said okay, uh, you you're speaking at the end is a kind of exposure for yourself you're published on the website etc, so maybe you want to support the Joomla as well so maybe you want to buy your own ticket, as well, uh, and. We, that was a kind of first of test, but it results that at the end, I think only two people uh, 
really wanted to get free entrance and the rest was really happy to just buy their own tickets for their food, etc. because they already have their exposure as well. So, um, so as speaker, put, putting the speaker's hat on, um, there's, there's certain thing, you know, for me, I will say yes to almost every invitation that I get, um, but the downside is I can't afford to go to, you know, to every single event, um, especially as um, when, I, when I'm speaking, I'm not speaking in any way related to a product or anything. There's no marketing value in me speaking. There's no personal benefit in any way. So if I'm going to come to, an, if you, you know, if you want to invite me to speak, then that's great. I'll come and I'll talk about Joomla. I'll give seven sessions in a day at Joomla Day Denmark, if that's what needs to be done. Um, but I can't afford to do it out of my own pocket. So that's something to think about when you think about international speakers. On the other hand, if I was an international, spe you know, an international speaker who does have a Joomla-related business that could potentially earn money as a direct result of, my, uh, of them being there, then maybe you don't need to pay them to come. You know, they, they're getting exposure by speaking. You know, so I think it's a sort of a balance thing to get. I mean, what you were talking about, um, your speakers having to pay to attend, it's a bit like here at J&B Beyond. Yeah? You're a speaker, but you're a participant. Yeah? That works at J&B Beyond. It works at the German Netherlands when you're talking about your local community speakers. Yeah, for guest speakers, it's it's slightly it's it, it's slightly different. Um, and the other thing, let's talk about you. You said about finding the program, and you're writing. These are the topics I want. Now, can I find somebody to give that one and to give that one? I mean, for a Joomla day, I personally think that's the best approach. Um, otherwise, you get crazy scenarios. There's a couple of Joomla days where they've done the whole program. They're actually at the Joomla day, and they're sitting there. Oh, you know what? We don't have a what is Joomla session. Can somebody give that? <laughs> um, you know, so you need to s start with the program and then find speakers to do that. Um, yeah, and a very important thing about that is that three years ago when we didn't have that and we just, you know, wanted people to come in there, um, uh, we got a lot of commercial talks, actually. Because everyone could talk what they wanted about, so what did they want to talk about? They wanted to talk about their business. And so we got complaints out of the people coming. So there's too many commercial talks here. We didn't really like it. So the next year we did it the other way around, and we didn't hear that complaint anymore since then. Um, I think it, it, it's also um, we, that, uh, and we come to, to to the beginning of the session. So you have to look at your uh, at your attendees. So. Um, uh, here at Jane Beyond, we have really attendees with with uh, good knowledge about uh, Joomla. So, and when when someone comes in and, and asks for a session, we, we tell them you d you don't need to have here uh, a commercial commercial presentation of your product. It makes no sense because everyone here is able to download uh, your product and, and check it out. So, there's no value in doing this. So, and you have to look what what's your what your attendees and and uh, what is the level f uh, for the, um, for the from the attendees what they have. We're almost running out of time. Of course, many things, to, interesting things to discuss still. Um, from those who already organized the Joomla Day, have you one good suggestion, one success story, what you uh, find out was working out really well at your local event? Start the marketing early. <laughs> Create a program first. Give the, make a list of the topics you want to have. One, one thing I found is leverage your sponsors and your speakers. They have a lot of reach. Um, you may not have a lot of marketing reach. They do. Um, provide them with certain coupon codes that they can use and market to their people to get a discount on the event that they're going to be sponsoring. And that will definitely draw in a lot of people. So that's worked out well, very well for us in Chicago. Yep. Yeah. No? Okay. Good. Um, um, join the event Google group, uh, and when you need someone help, we we also um, giving you a mentor. Ask for a mentor, and then we uh, 
put someone on your side and help you with, with, uh, with your Joomla day. Yeah, links on the one side, so. On the website, the website.joomla.org. And there's a link to the Google group and hmm. you don't need uh, it's a mentor, yeah, sure. And I just want to add, um, you mentioned at the start that there's some other processes that you also probably need to follow if, if you've got a website, for instance. Um, often Joomla days and Jug groups get stuck a bit with trademark issues and, and go a bit around circles with emails and things. Um, if you do get stuck, there's... You don't need to over and over with the same person if you don't get luck with the same person. There's other people you can try. You can email me if you, I'm at the moment the leader of the trademark team um, in open source matters. So if, if you do get stuck and you feel like you're up against a wall, you're welcome to email me and I'll try and see if there's a, a easier way to get get things off. But in, in general, there's, there's just a few simple rules that, that people should keep in mind, uh, just to, that, that we do respect the, the trademark and the logo, that, that we, so that there remains value in it for all of us. Um, I was gonna say, uh, the, the top, top tip for the event was if it's your first event, start small. Don't look at Joomla Day Netherlands or Jam Beyond as your model. As, as your model, yeah, one day is great. Yeah, maybe even just one session. You know, not have multiple sessions, or maybe do half the morning, do um, all together, and then in the afternoon maybe have options. And the second thing is, Joomla is about fun and meeting people. Yeah, so maybe make sure that there is time in your program for people to to say hello. Yeah, and if possible, have an optional gathering in a pub, in a bar, in a coffee shop in the evening. It can be a separate event, not part of it, but something, some opportunity for people to actually meet each other and have it. The, to, the, uh, the first thing uh, to, to explain, the Netherlands, the first Joomla day was just an afternoon. So, and then it was a day and then it was two days, so we grow slowly. Um, and all the, the social aspect, it's so important of uh, a Joomla day. It's not just about uh, the, the, the sharing during the sessions, but also around the event. It's great to meet others, uh, to hook up together, to share ideas just while drinking a beer or having dinner. Uh, that's one of the things that worked out very well in the past uh, two years in the Netherlands. We now have two days, but we also uh, offer dinner at the same venue, a uh, hotel at the same venue. Uh, so that's working out really well. It's really a, a community event at the end due to those changes, and that was working out really well. And you? Yeah, it's directed to Robert and Jacques. We want a resolution on the logo, please. Uh, another discussion. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I, I just want to say we need to end now, but. Um, Could you give the word still uh, well, for a few minutes to the people who are still. Yeah, I, I mean, we can stop the recordings and. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, to end, and of course I want to give to the ones who have questions here left, but um, I hope we, we just started to share our ideas, and I really hope that we all will continue with that on the Google group. Uh, at the moment it's a quiet of silence, but we can learn so much of each other. I think, I, I hope you all found this kind of worthful thing to, to hear about each story, uh, and to learn from each other, and also ask for help. I mean, uh, when you get stuck at something, reach out via the Google groups or sending an email to another event and ask how did you solve that. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Um, and uh, there's many... You can always ask me as well. Yeah. Do the ones... Make sure you have the bars there. And you are going probably to organize the Jumla Do you have still any questions? You can also ask, of course, afterwards, but for now, for the group? or. Started. For now, I don't have any questions, but um, we've already started uh, designing the website, and we, are, we also have the domain from cloudaccess.net, and um, we're going through the process of, of uh, approval, and uh, we're getting ready. So, that, you know, that's, you brought up another really, really quick point: is uh, cloudaccess.net will host for free any Joomla Day site. If you want, they'll support you on that, so. Have you? 
We are still. Yeah, well, we are still, uh, still organizing because we have many people uh, in the country that doesn't know each other. So that's the the main reason for the event. But we have the domain, uh, some mockups from the website, but we need to go to uh, to the process of approval and all that. So. No, it's okay for me. Okay. The only thing I can say. The only thing I can say about Belgium, it's a small country. We have uh, great uh, gym ladies in the Netherlands and in France. So I, I prefer, we prefer to do our best around the gym groups because we are also really poor on that side <coughs> due to the big countries around us. Um, this is the just very quickly. Last question is directed at the, the just uh, directed at potential sponsor. Would sponsorship um, a sponsorship deal make sense to sponsor multiple days? Um, yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is, um, if you sign a deal with five people or five groups and send the money to a central area and then it's distributed, or do you want to send it to each individual Joomla day? So thank you very much all for being here. Um, let's continue our work.